Now it's important that we look at the key findings from major studies because almost no medication or medication class has been studied as well as hormone replacement therapy. The first study we will look at is the nurses health study which is greater than 100,000 nurses and it is a um, prospective cohort study. So women were sent questionnaires every two years and they had multiple publications um, on the nurses health study. The nurses health study is where we found the increased risk of breast cancer at five and ten years and there was also an increased risk of stroke in women who are currently using therapy but a decreased risk in coronary heart disease. The next study to look at is the PEPI trial. PEPI is the postmenopausal estrogen and progesterone intervention trial. It's a NIH study, randomized controlled trial, multi-centered, and it compared conjugated equivalent estrogens or Premarin at the standard dose with medroxyprogesterone acetate, 10 milligrams for 10 days, 2.5 milligrams daily, or progesterone. There was a estrogen-only arm. What they looked for here was lipid um, profiles as a marker for coronary artery disease. And what we found was that estrogen was better than estrogen progesterone, better than placebo for improving lipids, especially HDL. And these were all oral formulated medications. The next study to look at is the HERS trial, which is the heart and estrogen progesterone replacement study. This was a four-year randomized control trial with 2,700 women. And it was a secondary prevention trial. And that's really important to think about. So these were women who had already established heart disease. Many of them have already had a heart attack, and they'd given them estrogen in order to see what would happen. The key findings of the HERS trial was that HRT did not prevent heart attacks or other serious events. There was a positive effect on lipids, and there was much more cardiovascular disease in the active group during the first year. But after two years, there was less cardiovascular events in the active group than in the placebo group. The curves for this study were really important. So this is the active group, and you can see that in the first year, there was a high rate of cardiovascular events, but they diminished over time. The placebo arm caught up in year two and then sort of flattened out. So the long-term findings of this study were that women who took coronary heart disease actually had a benefit in terms of secondary prevention. But the difference was so dramatic in the first year with a relative risk of 1.5 that the study was stopped early and it stopped the use of estrogen in women who had previously had coronary artery disease. The next study we want to look at is the ERA trial and that's the estrogen replacement and atherosclerosis study. It's a three-armed, randomized controlled trial with 309 women. And the key findings of this study was that there was no significant improvement or worsening in atherosclerotic plaque when women took estrogen. And that leads us to the WHI, the Women's Health Initiative. This was almost 200,000 women that were postmenopausal in 40 centers across the country, and it was a randomized controlled trial sponsored by the National Institutes of Health. And it combined PremPro, which is conjugated equivalent estrogens, and medroxy progesterone acetate with placebo. 
the average age of women in the study was 63.3, and they excluded women who were having menopausal symptoms because that would let you know who had the placebo and who didn't. Now, the study was designed to go on for 8.5 years, but it was stopped at 5.2 years in the PremPro group because of risks they believed. Now, if we look at the results of the Women's Health Initiative, we know that there was a 1.26 relative risk for breast cancer. We know that there was a hazard ratio of 1.24 for breast cancer, 1.29 for coronary heart disease, 1.41 for stroke and greater than 2 for pulmonary embolus and DVT. On the other hand, the hazard ratio was 0 0.66 for hip fracture, 0 0.83 endometrial cancer and 0 0.63 for colon cancer. Given the risks for breast cancer and heart disease, um, the active arm was stopped early. Now there was also an estrogen only arm which had very different findings and the estrogen only arm found a significant decreased risk of breast cancer, coronary events, and fractures. There was still an increased risk of pulmonary embolus and stroke. In the end, there was a lot of discussion about the menopausal patients in the Women's Health Initiative, and they looked at absolute risk. If we look at the absolute risk for every 10,000 postmenopausal women, there would be seven more coronary events, eight more strokes, eight more PEs, eight more invasive breast cancers, six fewer colorectal cancers, and five fewer hip fractures. Now it's important to remember that there were some additional problems in discussions about the, women, the Women's Health Initiative. The first is the average age of the woman was 63.3, and only 16% were less than 56. So it's not clear that these are women who were going through menopausal symptoms and needed estrogen. As I said earlier, the women with menopausal symptoms were excluded. There was no reporting of additional medications like cholesterol-lowering drugs or aspirin. And 42% of women in the PremPro group and 38% of women in the placebo group dropped out. So it's not clear whether the study was truly double-blinded. Now, if we look at the post hoc analysis, we can say that women who started hormone therapy greater than 10 years post-menopause had increased risk for coronary heart disease. And women who started hormone therapy less than 10 years post-menopause had a decreased risk of coronary heart disease. And women who were in the age 50 to 59 group had fewer deaths and cardiovascular events than women on placebo. So that's led us to wonder if we started medicine earlier, would we have a better effect? Now, we've also looked at a couple of other things. One is the effect of BMI on these results. So if we look at coronary heart disease and women's BMI, we know that from every BMI 
beyond 25, coronary heart disease goes up approximately twice the relative risk. But the risk of women in the WHI was under 1.5. So BMI plays a big role. Finally, two other studies I want to talk about. The first is one that looked at oral versus transdermal estrogen and the effect on lipids. And the transdermal estrogen studies have shown a significant decrease in triglycerides. They all have a decrease in total cholesterol. Lastly, we're going to look at the ester trial. And the ester trial was the estrogen and thromboembolic risk study. It was a case control study that was multi-centered. They had 270 cases and 610 controls. And what we found with the ester trial was that oral but not transdermal estrogen increased the risk of venous thromboembolism. With this brief introduction about menopause and hormone therapy, we should be able to move on to a case-based learning session together soon. Thank you.